Anyway, talking about personal responsibility and talking about accountability, can we talk about this, please? Can we talk about this on the subject of accountability and responsibility? This particular video has gone viral on my side of social media, and I'm having a hard time with some of the replies because some of the replies have been really, really, really pissing me off. And I'm going to play it for you here because I think you guys need to see this. So this particular young lady, as you can see, courtesy of this video, she's crying. She's crying because she shared this video. Really heartbreaking. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> On TikTok, um, it's her basically detailing what happened when her and her boyfriend broke up after three years. And it's a really heartbreaking story. Very heartbreaking story. But I feel like the reaction to it online has been really frustrating to me because there's a lack of responsibility and accountability that people are having in this particular issue and obviously the role that friends and shit play in it. So let me play this video for you so you can see why I go on. But this is a really, really, really funny one. Obviously, I'll put the link in the video, in the video as well in the description later for you to check out as well. Imagine you live in LA with your boyfriend and everything's going amazing till he says, <laughs> babe, I want to move back to Texas to be closer to my dad so you give up half of your career quit your improv troupe and have a goodbye party oh, take off months of work deplete your savings oh, to shit. pay for God movers bless and drive to texas bless so worth it for the love of your life that wants a future with you because he said so so you spend a month waiting for your shit to arrive and then another month moving in and building furniture and stuff and you're so happy he comes back from a family vacation Sits on your couch which just arrived in the mail and hands you a note That says we have nothing in common Jesus We're incompatible Oh no How, how did I not know this? This whole time, three and a half years of happiness We've been incompatible this whole time And that we have nothing in common For three and a half years Florida to live with your mom. Yo, yo, this girl deserves a fucking award to live with your mom. Do you know how heartbreaking that must be? The story started off with these star crossed lovers deciding to move, or the guy decides, I want to move back home to live close to my family. You pick up all your stuff, you move, you find a new job out there, you start having, you know, good couple time, you think you're going to have a life together. Because I think in a, in a woman's brain, if you, if, if, if a guy, you know, let me give my impression first of all. My impression first of all in the video is obviously very well done, really heartbreaking song, but also really good in some ways. And that also is a sign to you why some of us, myself included, you sometimes cheer for the for the failure of your favorite artist relationship because you know it's going to bring about some of the best music ever like that song came from a real place and you fucking felt it with every fiber of your being but let's be real the girl here is to blame she's the dummy here she's the real dummy yes the guy's a super duper super turbo coward we know that but somebody has to be a coward in a relationship right no one not I, very rarely do two people own up to the fact that oh this is not working we're going to split in amicable terms it's usually one person being cowardly and one person wanting answers and then you obviously end up breaking up in this respect i think the girl was a bit dumb the moment that guy said when he came back from a holiday like he got the clarity that he needed to kind of move back home no way you should have picked up your entire life and moved back with him you should have at least in the very at the very least at the very least tried to do the long distance relationship thing for a few months maybe a year and see how that panned out instead of moving your entire life there because what's to say that you know you were gonna find what you were looking for for your life in where that guy wants to go following somebody just like it those type of things that you should decide together as a couple you decide together as a couple to start a family you know to maybe you know buy a new house move to a new area whatever it may be but one person deciding i want to go here and you just blindly following them recipe for disaster i don't believe what people are saying on social now oh how could you go and move to another state with an, for another man you only date for three years i don't think it's a it's a issue of like how long they've been dating because i think that's an arbitrary number what is a what is a high enough how many years does it make sense for you to drop everything to move with somebody somewhere else there's no sense 
whether you're dating somebody 10 years, 20 years, two years, to just drop everything you're doing to follow somebody is fucking insane. Try the long distance thing first. If that doesn't work, cool, move away. It's almost similar to like when you're in college. When you're in like secondary school, about to go to uni and you got a girlfriend or a boyfriend and they move somewhere, you don't follow them to their uni. You just try and make the long distance thing work and usually it doesn't work nine times out of 10 and then you end up breaking up. But if you can make it work long distance while, you, while your girlfriend is, you know, getting fucking chased around the campus by hungry wolves um, in Nottingham somewhere, if you can make that work, then most likely you guys are going to survive the long term. But to pick up your entire life and go to another state, complete L. Complete and absolute utter L in that regard. But it also shows how real shit gets. And sometimes in this type of situations, love just blinds you to reason. Because I'm sure this girl isn't dumb. I'm sure she's a smart girl. I'm sure she's probably very sensible in other parts of her life. But sometimes, some of us, when it comes to love or when it comes to relationships, we just have a blind spot. Reason and rationality goes out the window. You got your, your guy, your girl told you to jump, you say how high. You know what I mean? Or you just jump. <laughs> you know, you don't even fucking, you don't do anything else. So I think in this particular situation, she can't be blamed for just following her heart. But I think you have to take personal accountability and say, even though the guy was cowardly, even though he didn't say what he should have said when he came back from the... Because that was the first red flag, right? The first red flag is when he came back from that trip and had like other visions of how his life is going to look. He came, he went, I think he went to a, a thing in the song, she says, he went to a family holiday. He came back home and suddenly he's like, oh, I want to live closer to my family. That should have been the biggest red flag. That should be the biggest red flag that he didn't want to be with you because most likely he was looking to be closer to home so that if he did move, so if he did break up, he wouldn't have much to travel, which is a really scummy back thing to do, right? The real scumbag thing that he did was that he broke up with this girl after he came back from a holiday with his parents or with his family and realized that she wasn't the one for him. But then he also made her move with him closer to his parents so that when they did break up, he wouldn't have far to travel. <laughs> he could just like, you know, walk around the corner and go back home if need be. That's a real scumbag thing to do. But God almighty, man. God almighty. God almighty. To start off that story the way he did, being super duper in love, and then to go to a point where you're driving back with your car full of fucking, you know, full of all your belongings with your dog crying on the highway. Just crying. Like, I think there's a scene in the video where she's just crying into the air. Like, which that's the most heartbreaking thing to me. Where is that? I think there's a bit in the video here. Where is it? Where she's just crying, staring. Like, there, this one. Like, could you imagine the pain she's going through right here? She's in her car, just like with all her belongings in it, just crying, sobbing into the air. <laughs> Cars are probably speeding past her, looking, thinking, ah, oh, I've been there. You know, they know exactly what's going on. A woman sees you, she's driving past, she's like, yep, I know. It's going to fucking hurt, but you have to fucking get it out. She's just on the highway, just fucking sobbing uncontrollably. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, feeling exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I personally don't understand the need that people have to film themselves crying anyway. I think it's very, very, I think it's a form of mental illness. I've always said it. I think it's really, really insane. Um, but, you know, people do what they got to do. There's a, there's a bit here in the clip where it says um, she split up with her. So this is, she was part of a, you quit your improv comedy trip and say goodbye. You know what people are saying on social media? They're like, oh, she should have never quit she should have never quit her improv comedy trip. Because most likely her friends in that improv trip would have told her, Hey, you're making a big mistake. Don't do this for another man. That's not true. If any of you guys know of people, family or friends, who have been in toxic relationships or who you've known have been in relationships that are clearly not going anywhere, because I think that's way worse. It's one thing for you to be a friend of somebody who's going who's in a relationship where it's toxic and it might be violent or whatever. But it's way more heartbreaking when you know your friend's relationship isn't going to last, but they think it is. It's like, oh, because you just have to let them go through it. You can't say anything that's going to make them see reason or it's going to make them see sense. They have to go through the heartbreak. And I think in this particular case, even if she did stay in her comedy improv troupe and hang out with her friends, her, sure, somebody in that group would have been like, what, he wants you to move where? They would have been able to say, like, hey, that's not a good idea. Don't do it. And most likely in that situation, I've been in situations like that. When you advise somebody about their relationship, more often than not, they're going to take it personally. They won't take it well. And in some cases, if you press on about it too much, they'll end up doubling and tripling down. And in worst cases, they'll end up cutting you off. They might stop talking to you about their relationship because they don't want you to give them unsolicited advice. They want you to just sit there and listen to their problems, but they don't want you to give them advice or solutions. 
So you're better off if you're a friend of somebody, which is really hard to do. You're better off just leaving them to go through what they're going through, make the mistake or not. And then whatever happens, you should be there to pick up the pieces. That, that actually is what a friend is. A friend is just there to pick up the pieces. <laughs> you can't prevent it, especially when it's love. You can't prevent this from happening. She was going to make this mistake regardless. If this guy was 10-year relationship, 5-year relationship, it wouldn't have mattered. She was going to make that mistake. It's just very, very cowardly of the guy to not have told her before. Because clearly he had that idea of breaking up with her after he came back from that family holiday and said he went to move back close to home. He should have told her from there. He should have told her from there, hey, I'm thinking of moving back, but I'm not really too sure about a relationship. Let's figure something out and go from there. And then through the conversation, they would be able to talk and it would have made the breakup easier too because he's already thinking of moving back home anyway. Um, Because I'm sure that would have been an awkward thing, right? I'm thinking of moving back home. And she's like, oh, I'll come. I'll come. It must have, that must have been hard because how do you tell her no? You know, because if you tell her no, that's, you know, admitting that you want to break up, but you don't really want to break up or no, you're afraid to say you want to break up. So you kind of just let it, you know, play out and you kind of, you know, the relationship ends up dying a death of a thousand cuts. But Jesus Christ, man, what a completely heartbreaking video. But again, goes to show the the lack of accountability from some women online is fucking staggering. The things I've seen online, people making all sorts of excuses for her. It's like, bro, she was blindly in love. We've all been there sometimes. She made the wrong move. And she's paid the price for it. But, I don't, you know, as much as the guy was in the wrong, this girl was definitely in the wrong. Like, why would you pick up your entire life and move it to a different state for somebody? Like, it makes absolutely no sense. Like, oh, did, did, did you actually say everyone's going amazing? Till, babe, till, okay, cool. This is even worse. Everyone was going amazing. So I, I've even got the order of the things wrong. They were fine. Then one day he said, I want to move back home to my parents. She should have grilled him more on that. Hey, why do you want to move back closer to your parents? Why is it, please? Could you maybe, you know, expound on that a little bit more? Could we talk about that a little bit more? Why do you want to move back closer to that area? Then for that conversation, they would have found out. Because I've got it the other around. I thought, I thought they, you know, he came up for holiday and he got that brainwave. No. That then, um, what you call it? Uh, he got, when he came up for holiday, that's when he said what he said. And I love that he wrote her a note. I, I love that he couldn't even say the reason was. You know, he had to write a note. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't even he didn't even have the guts he didn't even have the balls to face her face to face and say this is why i want to break up he had to write a fucking note <laughs> and i bet he wasn't in the house when she read it too i bet you put it in the envelope somewhere and he left the house and he came back super late or not at all and let her read it on her own absolute piece of shit it's like people it's like guys who decide to break up with girls to take on dinner you heard those stories, isn't it, right? Of guys that invite girls out for dinner and say, yeah, I want to break up over oh, <laughs> over some hamburgers and shit. It's like, bruh, you could have probably picked a better place to go and fucking end the thing situation. But, you know, at least now it's over. But yeah, that scene where she's driving a car to sobbing, it makes me laugh so fucking much, man. It makes me laugh so fucking much. But yeah. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Breakups are difficult. Breakups are difficult. Um, what you say here? Big up Shades, Cal. I bet she manipulated herself into moving in with him. He didn't want to be there. Yeah, exactly. But I don't believe that's fair as well on her. I think if he didn't want her to move with in with him in a new location, she should have said, you know? What's she going to say? Of course, she's going to be excited. Oh, I want to move here. Oh, that sounds amazing. Because to some people, if you say you want to move somewhere, it sounds like you're like ambitious, like you have plans for the future. Like, you know, like if, oh, I want to move to this place. She's going to think, oh shit, that also bodes well for me because that means this guy's thinking of the future. So he should have been clear about what he wanted to do, but he wasn't, you know, and she paid the price. Um, big up Z, people in toxic relationships don't want to hear any, exactly, don't want to hear it anyway. Exactly. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. Especially ones who are in like relationship where there's domestic violence involved. Like, they clearly don't want to hear it. They know it's bad. They just can't quit. Um, even quitting a job is wild, exactly. How can you listen to the woman's side of the story and think even half of it is true? Shades Cow. Yeah, but th 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 this, is all, this is all we have to go by. Do you know what I mean? So we'll, we go by what we go by when it comes to her. I, I don't think anyone said we think it's true. Um, I, obviously, I've, I've made my points as to why I think she's in the wrong. But I think in relationship, as, you know, as, as most of you would agree, it takes two to tango. And it's usually never like, one person's fault completely but i think in this particular situation both people are to blame but i think she's the most to blame because she's the one that blindly believed that you know they were going to make a new life for themselves in this new place 
when clearly he was trying to get away from her. Um, Big up Fashion Roadman. It's hard. I tried to I tried to break up with somebody constantly for a year. Some people refuse to let it end. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> trying to break up with somebody for a year is fucking crazy. Um, if that was me, I'd just change my number, man. I, I, ju- I'd just change my number and go fucking ghost. Eventually, people get, get the message. If you're if you're direct enough, they should get the message. If they don't, you know. But it also makes sense why they don't. If they're in love with you, you know, it's hard to kind of break that. That makes sense. It just it, it would be nice if there was more amicable breakups. There's not. You probably get more. You probably have way more amicable friendship breakups than you do relationship breakups. Weird, isn't it? Weird. Very, very even though I think friendship breakups hurt way more than relationship breakups for me. Somebody saying I don't want to be your friend stings way more than somebody saying i don't want to be your boyfriend or girlfriend i don't know maybe i'm in the minority but i honestly do think so but like that rejection of somebody saying hey i don't want to hang out with you anymore platonically as a friend nothing hurts more than that nothing hurts more than that maybe not, not even getting fired like you can get fired for dumb reasons you can rationalize in your brain that you were never the problem relationships same way but somebody saying hey i was your friend before i don't want to be your friend now that hits different. <laughs> that hits different. Especially when they're clear. Not 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 ghosting you. When they're clear and saying, hey, stop texting me. I don't want to hang out with you. Like, youch. Um, big up Koyla. I bet no I bet what's that? Pre what's your pre restraining order order? Um at least they didn't have yeah, at least they didn't have kids. Oh yeah, if they have kids, she'd be a deadbeat dad. Um he said, I want to move. Exactly not she. Sh- yeah, exactly Z. Exactly. Big up Z there. I didn't I didn't spot that. He said, I want to move. Not we should move. Big, good good point there. Good point. Very good point. But there's also guys who need like encouragement. I know, I, I've known of dudes who like, maybe wouldn't say we and say I, but then when you tag along, they'll realize how much they love you and then make something of it. You know, some guys also just need that encouragement. So I get why some girls just tag along because you never know, you know? He might he might figure out he loves you and you're the love of his life and he wants to spend the rest of your, rest of his life with you in the process of you kind of figuring out your life and your location. Considering what we see on these dating shows, it looks like the dating world out there is pretty rough. So I understand why some girls would rather take a chance at, to look like an idiot by betting on the person they're with and going all chips in, even if they're going to end up being embarrassed and heartbroken. Then saying, oh, I'm going to end it and go and look for somebody else outside because it, it seems like from what I've seen from people's, you know, reports and shit and what you see on dating shows, it seems like the streets aren't, <laughs> the streets aren't streeting, you know, but I could be wrong here. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm so happy that when I'm crying and sobbing, my instinct is not to turn on my camera. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't get it, man. If there was like, if you're on stream and you start crying over a story you read, one, that's one thing. But there are people that are like turning on their camera with the intention of crying. Like, or they're already crying and then they're turning on their camera. It's like, the last thing I want to do when I'm, I don't know, when, like, it's been a while since I've cried, but sometimes when I'm crying, like, you get a headache. You get really sad. You just want to go into your duvet and like, you know, disappear for a while. You don't want to be on your phone reading comments. on like, It's so, str- I don't know, the, the function of it is bizarre. Like, honestly, I find it honestly one of the most bizarre things in the world. I've never understood the, the 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 conviction to cry in front of a camera. I've actually seen videos recently of Dua Lipa doing it. She's allegedly known for crying on live stream. I'm like, babe, what are you doing? What are you doing, Dua Lipa? Like, it's never that serious, especially you. What are you doing? Like, why would you be crying on live stream? Mean comments. Someone didn't like your album or your outfit. Really? Pick up fashion romance. She would turn up everywhere. She knew I would be. It was peak. <laughs> I'd love to have a stalker, man. I'm not going to lie. I'd love to have a fucking stalker. Go live every time she pops up. It would be so fucking funny. Make her part of the fucking... Obviously, I'm saying it now. It won't be funny when they fucking, you know, burst into your drum or like sneak into your window and fucking, you know, stab you with a fucking hunted knife in your earlobe repeatedly. But I would love it just for the bands, just for the live streams, just for the fucking engagement and the fucking social media content. I would love it. So I think my worst breakup was um, just saying, hey, I'm good. Yeah, exactly. Big up, this is quite exactly. My worst breakup is who was saying, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, that hurts. Exactly. I'm nothing. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good on this. I'm over it. Oh, my God, man. So um, big up this girl. Hopefully she figures it out. Um, hopefully she figures it out. We can only hope. We can only hope.